Thank you for tuning into the broadcast of Eskimo Legends Fact or Fiction. In today's program, I will share with you an interesting story as it relates to the ancient history of the Eskimo who live in the far north. William F. Warren, in his book Paradise Found, The Cradle of the Human Race, presents the view that the human race originated in a tropical continent in the Arctic, the famed Hyperborea of the ancient Greeks, a land of sunshine and fruits, whose inhabitants, a race of gods, lived for over a thousand years without growing old. The ancient writings of the Chinese, Egyptians, Hindus, and other races, and the legends of the Eskimos, speak of a great opening in the north and a race that lives under the earth's crust, and that their ancestors came from this paradisical land in the earth's interior. Most writers on this subject claim that the interior of the earth is inhabited by a race of small brown-skinned people, and also that the Eskimos, whose racial origin differ from that of all other races on the earth's surface, came from this subterranean race. When the Eskimos were asked where their forefathers came from, they pointed to the north. Some Eskimo legends tell of a paradisical land of great beauty to the north. Eskimo legend also tells of a beautiful land of perpetual light where there is neither darkness at any time nor a too bright sun. This wonderful land has a mild climate where large lakes never freeze, where tropical animals roam in herds, and where birds of many colors cloud the sky, a land of perpetual youth where people live for thousands of years in peace and happiness. There is a story of a British king named Herla whom the Skraelings, Eskimos, took to a land of paradise beneath the earth. The Irish have a legend about a lovely land beyond the north where are continuous light and summer weather. And Scandinavian legends tell of a wonderful land far to the north called Ultima Thule. Many early legends tell of people going under the earth into a strange realm, staying there for a long period of time, and later returning. They even thought that some of their heroes had gone there and returned, after which they were never satisfied with their own country. Naturally, the Eskimos do not know that the earth is hollow and that ages ago they lived in its interior, but they have clung to that one simple fact, they came from the north. As for the land of perpetual sunshine, the Eskimo, of course, does not remember that as something he himself has seen, for it is very questionable if any of the Eskimos of the present generation have ever penetrated to the interior. But it is a well-known fact that every race has its idea of a golden age or paradise, which is generally composed of the elements being handed down in its stories and myths, or being characteristic of its earliest home. Thus, the Eskimo legends handed down generation after generation tales of the interior land with its ever-shining sun, and what could be more natural than when the Eskimo came to build in fancy a paradise for himself and his loved ones after they should die, that he should reconstruct his first home of what he had heard only in dim legends. An Eskimo discussing their religion says they believe in a future world and that the soul descends beneath the earth into various abodes, the first of which is somewhat in the nature of a purgatory, but the good spirits passing through it find that the other mansions improve till a great depth they reach that of perfect bliss. It is a place where the sun never sets, and where by the side of great lakes they never freeze. The deer roam in large herds, and the seal and the walrus always abound in the waters. That paradise might serve as almost a literal description of the land in the interior of the earth and the way in which the Eskimo indicates a preliminary purgatory before it can be reached may be the reflection of a memory handed down in the tribe of the great hardships and difficulties of the ice barrier between that wonderful home and the present situation of the Eskimo on the southern side of that great natural obstacle. It is also interesting to note that when the Eskimo saw explore Robert Peary's effort to get further north than the great ice cap of Greenland, beyond which they themselves had no ambition to explore, they immediately thought that the reason for his trying to get further north was to get into communication with other tribes there. That idea would hardly have occurred to them if it were not for the fact they had traditional or other evidence of people in the supposedly unpopulated north. Is there a paradise in the far north as Eskimo legends suggest? Hopefully this question will be answered in the not-too-distant future. 
Thank you for watching Eskimo Legends Fact or Fiction. Thank you.